Good morning. And thank you for braving the elements. Uh, the bad news is everybody says it's going to get worse. So not only for today, but for the new year, uh, drive carefully. There will be a lot of amateurs on the road today. That much I know. Uh, before we get started, Gabby will bring us up to date with some announcements. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, in case you haven't noticed, Pastor is away visiting with family in Texas for Christmas. Jason, Pat, and most of the choir, I believe, is out sick, but... You know, we've got some good strong ones holding down the fort for us. Uh, I would say while the cat's away, the mice will play, but, but, but apparently Pastor's watching us. <laughs> and uh, he sent me a message. He said he's so proud of how well-behaved everyone is this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so just to go over a few announcements, um, next Sunday the mites will be collected. There will also be a LWML meeting after worship. It's just a short meeting. There will be no lunch. Um, the January newsletters deadline is coming up. Also, uh, today is the last day to give for your donation to be recorded for the 2017 year. So uh, if you have any other you know, last minute donations that you wanna get in for this year, you can come see me after worship and we'll take care of that. Um, offering envelopes are in your mailboxes and y'all be sure to check your mailboxes. I still see some Christmas cards in some of them. So uh, be sure to check your mailboxes before you leave today. Other than that, I think that's about it. The, uh, the flowers and eternal candle sign-up sheet for 2018 is up. Chris has something. I'm sorry? There will be Sunday school and regular service next Sunday. Chris has something. So she didn't use a mic, and that's fine, but your poinsettias can go home. And I also was told and just remembered, in your service folder, our very last hymn is changing. In fact, it already has changed. Uh, when Christ's appearing was made known, we're going to scrub that and go with hymn 411, which is on the board. So just be aware that when we get there, that changed. The other addition I would like to make before we get started is an update on Pat Shields. Several of you may know she had hip replacement surgery Thursday. Uh, talked with her Friday or yesterday. I'm not sure which. Yesterday maybe. But anyway. Uh, she is doing well. Uh, talk with Don too, but and he's doing well. But I talk with I, I talk with uh, I talk with Pat. She is doing well. The surgery center where she had that done does not do therapy over the weekend, uh, whether it be a holiday or not. So at her request, and I think she has a little juice with Florida uh, with the hospital. She is being transported this morning from the surgery center to Florida, uh, Forest General where she can continue to do her rehab uh, today, tomorrow, and probably will be home within a couple of days. But anyway, I wanted to let you know we will remember to include her in our prayers, but her surgery went well and she has had, when I talked to her, it must have been yesterday, she had had two sessions of rehab already. Our gathering prayer, Heavenly Father, for you this morning, in Jesus' name, we pray all that we say and do in our worship will give you glory. Help us, Lord, to focus our thoughts on you so your word will find fertile ground in our minds and hearts. May the worship service today is in us the purpose you desire.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you as our whole heart. We have not loved you ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. We may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion. In the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, and the King, the mighty we worship you, we give you praise, we praise you for your The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray together. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you made known your only begotten Son to the Gentiles. Lead us, who know you by faith, to enjoy in heaven the fullness of your divine presence. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the Epiphany of our Lord is from Isaiah chapter 60. The prophet foretells how the nations shall recognize the arrival of the Messiah, how the light of his glory will draw all people from the ends of the earth to himself. Arise, Shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peopled. But the Lord will arise you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And the nations shall come to your light, and 
to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exalt because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels cover you. The young camels of Midia and Ephra, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall bring good news, the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Ephesians chapter 3. Paul reveals this mystery of the Messiah, that whether from the north, south, east, or west, all people everywhere are recipients of his great gift of grace. For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you had heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of man in other generations, as it now has been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, his grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him, and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And ye, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, 
gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the gospel of the Lord. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. And I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into hell and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Hence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I will give him the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the residence of the saints, the bread of life, the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As Pastor sometimes, oftentimes does, when he uh, starts to talk with us in the mornings, he says, I have a question for you. So we have three up here this morning, and the question's primarily for them, but anybody, let's say anybody under 20, and uh, these three certainly qualify, Gabby doesn't, but that's okay. <laughs> so I have a question for you. Has anybody heard the term, or can you tell me 
what a bell cow is. Do you know what a bell cow is? That's what I'm asking. Thank you, Gray. I'm asking the same thing. But, pardon me? It's a cow with a bell. Right. Now, where does he wear that bell? Do you know where he wears the bell? Around his neck. Who put the bell on his neck? Jesus. Farmer. Farmer. Very good, Daniel. Thank you. Now, this might be a little harder question, but it's related. Why would he put a bell on a cow? Yeah, you can come on up there, sure. So he could hear the cow, that's true. But who else could hear? Daniel? Pretty close. Similar. All right, let's help. Not lost. Who else knows what a bell cow does? Who would help? Who would help? One more time. Okay. So, maybe to alert when the cows are moving. And that's really what it does. When I was a little boy, I had an uncle who had a big farm. And he had a bell cow. Now, all farmers don't do it, but a lot of milk farmers do. And the reason is they put that bell around the neck on a lead cow. They don't elect him. He just is the leader. And when he comes in to be milked, the rest of the cows follow him because of the noise that the bell makes. So they all come to be milked twice a day. That's how we end up with milk so we can dip Oreos in it, okay? <laughs> so a bell cow is the leader for the other cows. Today we're celebrating Epiphany and they had a star that they followed. So I thought maybe it would help you guys relate, because epiphany is a big word, might help you guys relate if I talk to you about a bell cow. A be That's right. And the star helped the magi from getting lost. The star is what we're going to talk about today. So anyway, thank you for helping me help them understand what a bell cow was. Appreciate it. If you would, please pray with me. I offer all the prayers, the works, joys, and problems of this day to the Father. Through the Son, my Lord and brother, in union with the Holy Spirit, I unite myself in spirit and prayer with all the Christians throughout the world. May the people of God witness the good news of Christ in all places at all times, today and forever. Amen. Today we celebrate Epiphany because it commemorates the visit of the Magi who came to pay homage to the King of the Jews. Sometimes it has been called the Festival of the Three Kings. But they were probably not actually kings and no one is sure exactly how many of them there were. So it, a better name for this might simply be the Epiphany of Our Lord. For generations, there has been discussion about these wise men and who they actually were and what they actually did and where they were actually from. There has been more discussion about the astronomical nature of the star that alerted them to the birth of Christ. But in the end, what difference does it make? 
The real point of it all is not whether these visitors were wise men or which country to the east they were from. The real point is they were not from Israel and they were not Jews, at least not by birth. They were Gentiles. In the Greek, the word is ethnos, from which they get the word ethnic. Ethnic food is food that is foreign. In Hebrew, the word is goim. I hope it's close to that anyway. The word is goim. In both the Old and New Testaments, the word is frequently translated by the English word nations. The nations are the Gentiles, the non-Jews. When Jesus sends his disciples out to baptize all nations, it's the Gentiles that he is sending them to, to go and find and bring to him. The Gentiles are those people who are not Jewish by birth. Gentiles cannot trace their family tree back through Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. The Muslims trace their family tree to, the, to Abraham, but through Ishmael, and not Isaac and Jacob. God made it very clear that Israel was the nation through which the Messiah would come. We know from the scriptures that Israel was the chosen nation which the Lord God shepherded, protected, and blessed. Since the book of Matthews, Matthew reveals to the Magi and to us the revelation of the Christ child it also makes other things that Matthew records reference points for his message. It's not that God didn't care about the other nations and races of people. He did, and he still does today. He appointed Israel to be a light to the nations, something that corresponds exactly with Jesus sending of his disciples out to all nations to baptize and to teach. Israel was to be a light to the Gentiles, and they were to bring the Gentiles to the God of Israel. The fact that so much in the Old Testament points to the gathering of the nations and the Gentiles to the Lord, it may surprise us. Perhaps we thought God's drive for mission didn't really start until the day of Pentecost, when people from all nations were gathered in Jerusalem and heard the gospel preached each in their own language. In Genesis 12, God makes his great promise with Abraham and says, I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. In Psalm 86 we read, All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name again. Again, the prophet Isaiah writes in chapter 2, It shall come to pass in the later days that the mountain of the house of, this, uh, the, house of the Lord shall be established as the highest mountains, and all the nations shall flow to it, and many peoples shall come. These are just a few of the hundreds of references of the gathering of the Gentiles to the Lord. Only in Matthew's Gospel does he represent to us in the genealogy of Christ the naming of four Gentiles. Also, we know that they are all women. Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and Bathsheba. This makes the strongest case for God's Christmas mission to include people of every make and model, color and nationality in his plan for redemption. That is what we demonstrated in our Christmas program here at St. John two weeks ago. How can we as individuals or as a church really question or disagree with his plan for all people. The Gospel of Matthew starts with the message of today, which is to include all the nations. The Gospel ends, Matthew's Gospel, ends with the Great Commission. 
In words we can recognize, we are directed by him to accomplish this mission. Case closed. We are charged to pay particular attention to this end goal and whether in whatever means he chooses to accomplish it. Even in our own midst, who are the people or people groups that he is using today to accomplish his Christmas mission? What are they doing and saying? How are we being led to follow him in new and various ways? What does he want us to think about? What does he want us to see? What does he want to show or reveal or epiphany to us today? How does that lead us to action? Pastor John regularly reminds us that our faith grows when we are uncomfortable. Doesn't this direction help us to understand more deeply just exactly what he means when he says that to us? One of the frustrations of the Old Testament is that Israel is not the light to the nations that it should be. They figured somehow that since God had chosen them to be his special people, that meant he rejected everybody else. So the gathering of the Gentiles to the God of Israel fell a little short of God's intention. They accepted only a portion of what they were told. Now God sends his son into the world. And Jesus is the new Israel. Immediately we see him being the light to the nations that, er that Israel was meant to be. First it is the lowly shepherds who come to Jesus. Then it's the foreigners. The visit of the Magi marks the beginning of the gathering of the Gentiles to the Lord. This remains a dominant theme throughout the New Testament. We might have thought that Matthew's gospel was written to the Jews. But look how he begins with Gentiles from the east coming to worship Jesus. And he ends his gospel with sending out of the disciples. Insert you and I right there to bring this light to all the world. The reason I have distinguished the Gentiles so much is because as this is what makes the epiphany so important for you and I. We are Gentiles by birth, outsiders by nature, and foreigners to the kingdom of God. We are the ones St. Paul writes about to the Ephesians when he wrote, you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once walked. Following the course of this world, remember that you were at the time separated from Christ alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near. I also want to touch a little on what it was that motivated these wise men to undertake such a journey. It was the sighting of a star we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. This may sound a little strange at first hearing, but when we consider that eastern nations like Persia and Babylon were known for their astrologers who chartered the pattern of the stars and traced their movements across the sky, it's not that hard for us to understand how they may have identified that something unusual and special was taking place. But why did they associate this special star with the birth of the king of the Jews? Remember that it was Babylon who conquered Israel and took them to Babylon 600 years before Christ. One of those exiles was a young man named Daniel who was appointed by the king of Babylon to oversee the work of the astronomers. In Daniel chapter 2 we read, then the king placed Daniel in a high position and placed him in charge of all its magi. And don't you think that this holy and devout man of God would have told them about the coming of a great king? And if there was one prophecy in particular 
that would have stuck with these stargazers. It would have been the prophecy of Balaam who said, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Israel, and a scepter head shall rise out of Israel, and it shall crush the forehead of his enemies. We read that in the book of Numbers 24, verse 17. Now tell me that that would not register with them. So 600 years later, when they saw a strange star in the sky, they took it to be his star. And they went to Jerusalem to pay homage to the king of the Jews. To the shepherds in the field outside of Bethlehem, God sent his angels. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. But to these foreigners from the east, God devotes a star to announce his coming and to call them to himself. Forty days after Jesus' birth, Mary and Joseph came to the temple for the rite of purification. A priest on duty named Simeon took the baby from their arms into his and declared, My eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. Luke chapter 2, verse 32. Sometimes we've used the song of Simeon or the monk Menace in our communion liturgy, and it has always been very special to me, both the music and the words, that Simeon spoke at that time. Can you just imagine the emotion in the hearts of Mary and Joseph as they listened that day. This bright light that draws men to the Christ is the theme of Epiphany. Jesus declares, I am the light of the world. He was and is the light that was created when God spoke in the very beginning, when he said, let there be light, and there was light. He is the light that burst upon Saul as he was riding to Damascus that converted Saul to Paul, who became the great apostle to the Gentiles. We read about that event in Acts chapter 13, verse 44. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. It is still the same light that shines into our darkness, at our worst times of brokenness, and draws us to Jesus. As it was the same light for the Magi, But today, we don't look to the stars to lead us to Christ. Today, we look only to the Word of God, which ultimately is also what led the Magi to Jesus. But once in Jerusalem, it was by the searching of the Scriptures that they were told where they could find the Christ. In Psalm 119, verse 105, the psalmist declares, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my to my path. This points us to something far more authoritative than a star in the sky. St. Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, we have something more sure, the prophetic word to which you will do well to pay attention, as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Today we celebrate the visit of the Magi, We give thanks to God that the light of Christ has shined in our hearts and led us to worship him. We also pray that we might be a light to the Gentiles in Hattiesburg, where we have been placed, that they too would be drawn to come and worship the King of the Jews. In that way, we are all brought near. Now, if you would, please turn in the service book in front of you, the uh, red Lutheran service book. Please turn to page 105. That's the first place in the service hymn that I found the Nunc Dominus. It's been a while since we did it, but if you, what I would like is for Sandy and Chris to play it through one time to re-familiarize you with the music and then to have us sing it. Page 165 in the service book.
We will now gather together our tithes and offerings. Please stand for the prayers of the church. Lord God, bless your word wherever it is proclaimed. Make it a word of power and peace to convert those not yet, not yet your own and to confirm those who have come to saving faith. Make it the shining light of direction so that all may follow your star. May your word pass from ear to the heart, from the heart to the lip, and from the lip to the life that as you have promised, your word may achieve the purpose for which you sent it. O oh Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for St. John and our mission. We pray for the armed forces and those who minister to them. O oh Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for our faithful church workers, and we pray for Pastor John and his family. O oh Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for your grace to use our gifts always to honor and for your glory. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those listed in our service folder. We pray for Pat as she recovers from surgery. We pray for the sick. We pray for those who are lonely or separated from their family. O oh Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for those with afflictions and addictions, for those who are cold and hungry. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing. Let us bless the Lord.
We speak the Romans 15 blessing to each other. Leave no one alone. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And our hymn changes for late arrivals. We're going to scratch when Christ's appearing was made known and go to 411, I think it is.